This is Jackie with All Access, and I'm here with Watsky at a very rainy Vans Warped Tour in New York State. Um, for all of the many listeners behind us and in there, uh, describe your sound. Well, I'm touring with Wax, who you just spoke to, and you know there's some similarities because we're actually traveling with the same musicians. Um, I would say it's like alternative hip hop is the simplest way to describe it, but it's got a combination of, you know, I'm a rapper, but I also play with jazz musicians who have rock backgrounds too. So there's elements of jazz, there's elements of rock, um, of R&B. You know, our singer's got a pretty classic like R&B type voice. I play harmonica. Um, it's it's eclectic. Alternative hip hop's the best way to describe it, I would say. All right, so alternative hip hop and you play harmonica. When did you learn to play the harmonica? And how does that fit into your sound? Uh, I mean, I taught myself to play harmonica. I would not say it's an element of my sound. You know, I, I play on like two songs or something. And um, yeah, I whip it out during the show more as like a theatrical thing to do rather than, you know, saying I'm like, you know, I'm not a virtuoso harmonica player or anything. Yeah, I know. You do a good job. Um, what are the alternative elements that you bring to the stage? You know, I try and, like, put on a good show every time. I, I actually studied theater in college, so uh, I try not to be, like, theatrical in the sense that I'm, I'm not trying to look like a musical theater kid up there on stage, but I'm also, like, trying to make sure that even though we're doing the show 40 times in a row that it feels different every time we do it. So I put a lot of, like... I put a lot of effort into trying to make sure that there's unique stuff going on. I'm always interactive with my audience. Like I go out to the crowd and see what they're doing and yeah, like I try and I try and just keep it fresh every time. How do you make it feel fresh for yourself every time? Um, I think it's it's more just about like not stressing too much, like living in the moment, you know. It's it's when the same lessons that you get when you're a theater student are the same ones I think you apply to uh, being on stage, which is you've done all the preparation, like you know your lines are memorized, you know you know the material backwards and forwards, and then you just go out there and try to have fun. Like don't worry about whether you're gonna nail the performance or not because you know you're so confident in it that you can just focus on trying to react to what the crowd is doing and and yeah, be spontaneous. Uh, so how do you make sure that you leave a memorable impression with all those Warped Tour fans out there? I don't know. I, I'm trying to lo walk a line between not being out of control on stage and also doing a good job. You know, for instance, today there was tarps covering up all the um, speaker stacks and stuff because of the rain. And so the stage crew asked us all not to, like, hop up on the subwoofers like we do normally. And, you know, that's something that I do every time. So... It's it's like it's walking that line between trying to put your all into the performance, but also not trying to be a wrecking ball, you know, swinging your way through. So yeah. Oh, that Marley Cyrus reference. Not intentionally. I actually just wanted to say the the word wrecking ball, but now you know I can't. Miley's copywritten it, so. She has. I think so. Culturally, yeah. All right then. <laughs> uh, I'm sure she's got plenty of ridiculous, horrid band merch. I hear you've got some creative band merch you can tell me about. Yeah, Wax just mentioned I got this like CD that folds out into a castle because the CD is called Cardboard Castles. Um, I love doing packaging as like stupid as that sounds. I like figuring out how the physical product can be an extension of the music, especially now because like I think we're about like a year and a half away from CDs being totally obsolete. You know, Retina computers don't have CD drives in them anymore. I have no way to burn a CD for people. So if someone's going to come to the merch table and actually buy a CD, I feel like you increase the chances of someone doing that if it feels like a collectible item that they can have. So I put a lot of effort into trying to make sure that the packaging's cool and, yeah, is, is like something that's relevant to the actual project itself. Uh, I've, we've, I've been talking to bands all day about tangible CDs, so I've got... I've got a plan to talk to you about after the, yeah. the interview. You're going to help us, like, push back the tide of technology somehow? I wish I could. <laughs> How has uh, streaming, online streaming, has it helped you or hindered uh, your progress? I think the way that the Internet's developed has, has made my career as it stands right now possible. Like, if it weren't for YouTube and it weren't for social media and me being able to reach out to people who like my music, you know, for the people who haven't seen my stuff, they don't know what I'm talking about, but like the kind of music that I put out is quirky. It's, it's an acquired taste, and it's not top 40. It's not pop music. I'm not a matinee idol. You know, I'm not the kind of 
pop star who fits perfectly into a major label mold. And so if I didn't have the opportunity to go to people who wanted something a little bit left of center, then I don't think I ever would have gotten a shot. So on the one hand, it kind of sucks because I'm not making a ton of money, but I also have a lot of fans, a lot of passionate fans who show up to all these Warped Tour dates and who do want to support me. So, you know, even though the middle class is shrinking in America, it's growing in the music world. Like, there's a new class of musicians who aren't wealthy but who are able to support themselves through having a really close relationship with a passionate group of followers. That's what the Internet's allowed me to have. You made a bunch of good points in that last, uh, that last sentence there. Um, as the music industry continues to evolve, <coughs> excuse me, um, back in the day, album sales used to be the mark. However, you know, that first week sales or whatever, um, how do you sort of judge success for you? What's a, how do you know that you, you feel successful? I think that that's a slippery slope. Like, there's a lot of musicians who have platinum albums who still don't feel successful because they always want more and more and more. And that, that's human nature. You know, once you get something, then you take it for granted and you want the next thing. And I'm guilty of that as well. So, you know, the thing that I've been saying for years is that I judge success by sustainability. Like, if I can keep doing this for as long as I want to and I don't get pushed out of the industry before I'm ready, then I feel like I'm successful. If I can support my band members, if I can pay for the bus and the gas and the music videos and I'm able to do what I love, then I feel successful. Um, the danger is as your band members and merch people and tour managers get older and start having families, they can't do it on a shoestring budget anymore. You know, like you need to be able to pay people a living wage if you're going to keep working with the same folks. So that means that you have to have your career grow and you have to be making more money, but, you know, not necessarily beaver money. So, like, I, I just want to, I just want to be able to do this for a long time. And I don't know exactly what that means, but, you know, I'm, I'm living my dream. I'm, I'm riding around in R. Kelly's old tour bus performing to a, a, hundreds of people every day. And I, I feel pretty good about that. I feel successful. One, good. Two, there are a lot of jokes in what you just said, and I won't go there because I'm a good person. What's up next for you after Warp Tour? Um, unlike Wax, I'm going straight, uh, straight into another tour. So uh, I leave in September. I'm playing Outside Lands, big festival in San Francisco. My new album uh, comes out August 12th, and then September we're going to Europe. October, November we're going to the U tour the U.S. club tours. And then it looks like December we're going to go to Australia, so we'll be touring pretty much until like 2015. What's the name of your soon-to-be-released album? Uh, it's called All You Can Do, August 12th. All You Can Do, August 12th. Stay tuned for more from Watsky. This is Jackie. Thanks to All Access and In the Key of Change. <laughs>